You're about to enter the Red Zone Sports Show on Fox 5. Let's go! The Rebels reach the first bye of the season, and they do so above 500 and riding a three-game winning streak. Tonight in the Reb Zone, a look back at the first five games, the good, the bad, and the streak enders. Plus, a preview of next week's crucial game against Hawaii. And a look at a key weapon so far this season, punter Logan Yunker. Let's fire up the good vibes. That's what I'm talking about, baby. We're going the distance in the Reb Zone right now. This is the Reb Zone Sports Show, only on Fox 5. Good evening and welcome inside the Reb Zone. Kevin Bullier alongside UNLV football coach Bobby Houck as UNLV enjoyed their bye week to get healthy, rested, and prepared for the next one. And, and nice to have really a, a down week, if you will. Yeah, you didn't have to stay up till 5 in the morning getting ready for this thing. So it was, it was a good uh, week for us. We got some recruiting done. Uh, we got a head start on the University of Hawaii, and hopefully we freshened our team up a little bit while still getting some, some good physical work in. We're going to look back at the first five games of the season. We're going to begin with that tough start against two solid teams from the Big Ten and the Pac-12. Hey, we got to go in this game, and we got to play! The season opened on a steamy Thursday night in Minneapolis as the Rebels faced off with Minnesota. Right out of the gate, the offense showed what it's capable of, putting together a controlled drive capped by Tim Cornette. Cornette hustles in to the end zone for the touchdown. Later in the first half, Devontae Davis gave fans a preview of what was to come this season. Touchdown, Vegas! But special teams struggled, allowing a kickoff return for a score to open the second half and a blocked field goal return for a touchdown. And the Rebels left town disappointed after a 51-23 loss. Next up, the home opener against Arizona and a big crowd on hand. But the Wildcats' Kadeem Carey ran wild on the Rebel defense sitting out the first quarter and still rushing for 171 yards and two scores. Arizona rolled 58-13, and after two games, UNLV's defense had given up 109 points. Rebel disappointment, but confidence that good things were yet to come. Let's go, let's go, let's go! Well, after the first two games, there were two problems that it looked like needed to be shored up right away, and that was some special teams issue and the run defense. Yeah, and, you know, that's obviously always a work in progress as you go through these seasons. They're long, and, and uh, you know, we really felt like we gave an opportunity away at Minnesota to win the game because we, uh, we had just some big miscues. We had a, uh, well, they're documented, a field goal block for a touchdown, a kickoff return, an interception for a touchdown. You're not going to win on the road against anybody let alone a Big Ten school, and we felt like we gave that opportunity away. And then uh, Arizona's better than us. They played better than us, and they whipped our tail, and, and we had to get back to work. From a scheduling standpoint, I know head coaches don't always have a hand necessarily in what gets scheduled, and it's done so far in advance. But do you prefer those big challenges to gauge your team against the big conferences, or would you – rather have maybe lesser opponents to try and get some confidence built early in the season? Well, I wouldn't say lesser opponents, but I think in order to get football going at UNLV and have some consistency, we can't be playing the who's who of college football. I mean, a couple of years ago, we played 15, 11, 5, 3, and 2 ranked in the nation. That's just not going to work here. And, uh, you know, a balanced team that uh, is level in terms of ability and and budgeting and everything else is probably what we ought to be playing in the non-conference. Responding to adversity, how does, how does a coach know that a team has what it takes to respond when they go down 0-2 like well, that? Well, you, you really find out a lot about people and how they do respond to adversity. And everybody's, it's, it's, every, it's easy to go, uh, go along with the flow, to excel when things are going well and everything's coming easy. But uh, you find out most about people, and I think in our game in particular, when people have to deal with adversity, you find out about them. And uh, we've got a bunch of people that have a lot of character in our locker room. Well, the Rebels uh, swiped those first two games aside. And since those first two games, the Rebels really have put together some really good football, winning three straight in dramatic and historic fashion. Whoa. It should be so much fun by now. 
Week three saw the Rebels back at Sam Boyd Stadium to take on Central Michigan, and UNLV quickly dug a 21-0 hole. But this is the point where the season took a 180. Caleb Herring replaced Nick Sherry at quarterback, and things started clicking offensively. Just before the half, Devontae Davis caught this touchdown pass to cut the lead to 14, heading into the locker room. In the second half, the defense went into shutdown mode giving the Chippewas nothing while the O started lighting things up. Herring was named Mountain West Conference Offensive Player of the Week, setting a Rebel record for completion percentage, going 24 of 28 with three touchdowns, all to Davis. And UNLV scored 31 straight points to tie the largest comeback in school history with a 31-21 win, their first of the year. Next up, Western Illinois, and by far the most complete victory of the year so far. And a handoff goes straight ahead of Cornet. He's got all the time in the world. 10, 5, touchdown Rebels. The offense used a balanced attack in racking up 424 yards and scoring the first 31 points of the game, making it 62 unanswered over two weeks. The defense got its mojo back shutting down the Leathernecks, and UNLV evened its record at 2-2 two two with a convincing 38-7 win. The momentum translated to the road as UNLV went to New Mexico for the Mountain West opener, looking to snap a 23-game losing streak away from Las Vegas. The first half was a shootout as both teams racked up almost 750 yards of total offense, and at halftime, things were tied up at 35. The magic came in the second half. Herring found Davis for the nice grab and attempted high five of the official. Then Davis with the tiptoe catch in the end zone, giving UNLV the lead for good. The defense held New Mexico to 140 yards and seven points in the second half, and Tim Cornette put things away late. A dousy for Bobby Houck and a party on the sideline and in the locker room. The Rebels break the road losing streak, win three straight for the first time since 2003, and hit the bye with some impressive team and individual numbers. The defense, third in the country in passing yards allowed per game. Davis, second in the nation in receiving touchdowns. Cornette, sixth in the nation in rushing touchdowns. And Herring, number one in the nation in passing percentage. The most important number? three and two with seven games left and a lot to play for. You know, if you guys keep winning, those guys might actually be good singers by the yeah, end of the season. I don't get tired of watching. They can sing as bad as they want as long as we're singing it. <laughs> Is it safe to say that that second half of the Central Michigan game, Central Michigan game was the turning point of the season so far? Yeah, I'd say so. You know, we were down 21 nothing in that game. We'd, uh, we'd been beaten soundly the week before by Arizona. And so, you know, you got to figure it out. And we, we, need, we needed to start making some plays. And, and really, since the middle of the second quarter there on defense, which, which is where it started, uh, we've been making a lot of plays. You made the switch at quarterback during that game uh, from Nick Sherry to Caleb Herring, and the offense really ha has clicked and put out, up a lot of big numbers since then. Yeah, Caleb's been, been hot, and it's always good to have a quarterback with a hot hand. I mean, if you look around just our conference, the people whose quarterbacks got the hot hand are winning football games. And, and you know, whether it's Fresno or Boise or, or Wyoming, the weeks they've won, uh, the quarterback that's been hot has been the guy that's uh, leading his team to victory. That losing streak it was talked about so much in the media and with the fans. Is ending that as big of a deal as we are all making it out to be, or do you look at it as just another win and going 1-0 in the conference season? You know, we've never tried to make that a, an albatross at all. So for us, it's a good win. We're 1-0 in the league. We've won three in a row. Uh, that's, that's the goal. I mean, it's nice to not have to answer those questions every time we go on the road. But uh, for us, it's all about winning that week and getting on to the next one, which in, in this case is Hawaii. 
And there's something we haven't really done a lot here at UNLV with football over the past several years, and that's the winning streak and getting the confidence going. As a coach, do you worry at all that that confidence can turn into cockiness, or do they remember the history of what's happened here? Well, I, I think our guys will, will, will continue to remind them. And, you know, I'm aware of the fact that it's been, uh, it's been over 10 years, over a decade since UNLV's won three games in a row. And I'm aware, and as our guys are, that it's been 30 years since UNLV's won four in a row. So it's been a long time. Uh, but our guys, I mean, it, it's recent history. We know what Hawaii did to us last year. They beat us soundly. And uh, we need to do our best this week to prepare to return the favor. One thing that a lot of Rebel fans were frustrated with under Mike Sanford, who came here before you, were there were a lot of penalties and mistakes, false starts and, and uh, unsportsmanlike conducts. That has disappeared under you. In fact, UNLV only has one accepted penalty in the last 10 quarters. The discipline of this team really has led to, to a lot of the success that you've seen on the field. Well, I, I agree. If all the things that I hold uh, dear to my heart are, are true as in, in winning football, you know, running the ball and stopping the run, winning the turnover battle, playing penalty free, uh, if a team does that, they've got a chance of winning. And when we've done that, we've had a chance to win games. Now, we haven't won them all, but we've put ourselves in position to win those. And, you know, I, I think we, I like to think we have a disciplined football team that plays really hard and tackles well and is physical. And um, we're going to continue to nurture that, and that's what we need to be. We are just getting started here in the Reb Zone. Up next, we're going to take a look at next week's opponent against Hawaii and which Hawaii team is going to show up here in Las Vegas and what do the Rebels have to do to get their fourth straight win. We have a preview and more analysis from Coach Houck in just two minutes. You're watching the Reb Zone Sports Show on Fox 5. On Saturday at 5 p.m., Hawaii comes to Las Vegas to take on the Rebels. And at this point of the season, it's really two teams headed in different directions. Hawaii is winless, and UNLV, of course, has won three straight. But beating the Warriors will not be an easy task. If you think that this is a week to just kick back and hang loose, think again. Hawaiians may bring with them the spirit of aloha, but the Hawaii football team brings desperation trying to get their season on track after a rough start. Head coach Norm Chow has been a wildly successful offensive coordinator in his career, but in his second year as head coach, he's still bringing in the recruits to fit his system. The Warriors have used three different quarterbacks this season, but everyone has been scrambling for their lives as the offensive line has given up a ton of sacks. Top running back Joey Iosefa is out with a foot injury, leaving a backfield of untested Steven Lakalaka -Laka and Diosimi St. Just. Unlike its history, defense is where Hawaii excels, ranked one of the top statistically in the country. With Las Vegas considered the ninth island and more than 100,000 natives living here in southern Nevada, the Warriors will have a large fan base at Sam Boyd. But Chow says that can be an asset and a curse. We need to play well. We need to, we need to focus in on the things that we can control. We, we appreciate all the support, fan support, but uh, we have to play good football. Travel is always a concern for Hawaii, but they're making their first trip in three weeks. That's a unique situation for us. We're the one that's out in the middle of nowhere in the Pacific. Uh, so that six hour flight just to LA alone um, is a challenge, but you know, we're all about no excuses. Um, other teams have to face that once a year when they come out to play us. We have to do it six times a year when we come to the mainland. Last week, Hawaii nearly rallied from a 42-3 third quarter deficit against Fresno State, meaning the offense might just be grasping Chow's schemes and that no lead will be safe. The Rebels need a complete game to get win number four on the season. Well, they say there's nothing more dangerous than a desperate team, and Hawaii is certainly going to be coming into Las Vegas desperate. Well, we better be desperate too then. That's what I would say. And uh, 
Uh, Hawaii's got a good football team, and we've got to encourage our guys not to look at the record, but look at the film. They've got good players. They're well coached. They're big up front. They've got great skill. Uh, they just haven't put it together, and we got to try to prevent them from doing that next Saturday in Vegas. Well, as you well know, when a new coach comes in with a new system, it takes a little while not only to get the recruits in, but for everybody to grasp it. Now they're in a second year. Is there a worry they're putting points on the board uh, here over the last two weeks that they're finally starting to grasp what he's doing? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the deal with them is it wasn't so much about implementing a recruiting plan and everything else, because they had guys. When June was there, they recruited guys. They played in the Sugar Bowl when Greg was there. They had, a good, they had good football teams and played in bowl games. And uh, so it's more about the scheme. And uh, they are certainly understanding of Tom Kamar's scheme on defense and the stuff Norm wants to do on offense, that's for sure. Uh, UNLV's first bye week since 2011. We talked a little bit about this last week. Is that a good thing? Is this team now, after, after you've had the week off, uh, better rested? And are you better prepared to get into this game? Well, when you're on a roll, you'd kind of like to play, but that's not the case. So that's just, those are just, that's just verbiage and words. It's complaining, so to speak. And I'm not complaining. I think we got good value out of our week last week. And now we need to crank it back up and have a lot of urgency in our preparation this coming week. How important is the defensive line for UNLV in this game? Because their offensive line has given up um, more than 20 sacks so far this season. Yeah, we, we've got to get them into situations where they have to throw it. I mean, they're a very balanced uh, team. They like to play action in the early downs. They've got a good solid run game, good backs. The, the line does run block very well. Uh, so if you get them into some uh, known passing situations, that's, what, that's why they've given up the sacks. They've been a lot of those. Uh, like the second half of the Fresno game, they weren't in those situations and they made a bunch of plays and scored 30 whatever points in the second half against a good Fresno State defense. Kickoff for that game is set for 5 o'clock over at Sam Boyd Stadium. And straight ahead in the Reb Zone, we're going to have an inside look at some of the sounds of the game from Rebel football so far this season. Plus, a profile of UNLV punter Logan Yunker, a local product who chose UNR first and then admitted his mistake and is now kicking his way to national prominence. You're watching the Reb Zone Sports Show on Fox 5. The Rebels have been an exciting team to watch this season from the stands, but on the field, you get a real feel for the passion for the game that UNLV has. Reb Zone photojournalist Robbie Hunt gives you an inside look at the sounds of the game. What's up, boys? This should be so much fun by now. And all the time, man. Let's go. One, two, three. One, two, three. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, we got to go in this game, and we got to play. Let's go, O. Cornette hustles in to the end zone for the touchdown. That's you, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Hopefully we'll be seeing a lot more of that this season. Now, when Rebel fans think of this year's team, they likely think of names like Davis, Cornette, Herring, and Maka. But you might want to add Yunker to that list, as in punter Logan Yunker. The local product has quickly turned into an extra weapon on the field. Kick it! The punter is often overlooked on a football team, but UNLV's Logan Yunker is being noticed. Yonker ranks seventh nationally with an average of 46.4 yards per attempt and has won back-to-back -back Mountain West Conference Special Teams Player of the Week awards. I love the pressure. I do better with pressure. You gotta be comfortable in the position. You gotta have nerves of steel. You gotta realize that you, gotta, you have a job to do and you gotta do it. The Arborview grad is back home in Las Vegas after initially deciding to attend Nevada. But after redshirting, he decided to come back and walk on at a school that he followed his entire life. My inner rebel wouldn't let me become part of the Wolfpack, I guess. Yunker sat out a year after transferring and won the job in camp, but the first punt of his college career was shaky and shanky at Minnesota. That first punt was a little nerve-wracking. That was the first, first collegiate game, first everything. I was backed up on our, was our 10 or 15, you know, and that's... That's what, the, unfortunately, was the first punt. Since then, it has been boomer after boomer, consistently pending the opponent deep 
and giving the Rebels opportunities to win the battle of field position. It's been big, controlling field position is a huge part of the game and uh, he's, a, he's a big part of that. Yonker credits his punt team for making him comfortable, getting a good snap, receiving protection for time to kick, and seeing a lifelong dream become reality with a bright future ahead. Hard work, dedication, I mean, eventually, hopefully it pays off and uh, it's great off for me. All right, something to keep your eye on as you watch Rebel games throughout the year. We're going to take one more short break, Good and then stuff. up next, we're going to look at the Rebel plays of the year so far. But first, here's how other teams in the Mountain West did this week. You're watching the Reb Zone Sports Show on Fox 5. Well, we know the Hawaiians are going to show up at the game on Saturday night. Important for the Rebels to have a big crowd as well. Yeah, it is. Well, I think the Rebels are going to show up too. The ones in uh, the red jerseys and I think the ones in the uh, red t-shirts too. And we, we need people to come out. It's been a lot of fun around here the last three weeks. And we want and we need people to come out and enjoy that with us. This, is, uh, this has been great and it's going to continue to be great. And, and we certainly want people to come out and join us. All right, kickoff set for 5 o'clock. Thanks for joining us tonight. Here's the Rebel Plays of the Year from the first half. Good night. Thank you, baby.